Software Engineering Radio, episode 110, Roles in Software Engineering, part 1. This is Software Engineering Radio, the podcast for professional developers, on the web at se-radio.net. SE Radio brings you relevant and detailed discussions and interviews on software engineering topics every 10 days. Thanks to our audience and the partners listed on our website for supporting the podcast. Okay, then welcome listeners to another episode of Software Engineering Radio. Um, in this episode, we are going to talk about roles in software engineering and also skills and competencies. So what people are required to be able to do for certain roles. Um, Michael is on the other end of the wire. Hello, Michael. Hello, Marcus. So uh, I'm going to play the, the interviewer. So uh, Michael is going to be the person who's going to do most of the, of the important talking. So, um, Michael, um, I guess before we actually start and talk about the, the, the specific roles, why don't you give us a little bit of a background um, why you came up with this episode, why you want to talk about it, and you know, what are some of the backgrounds? Okay, so first, hello, listeners. Uh, this uh, episode is something I have been looking for very much. And um, the, the reason we do this uh, episode on, on software engineering roles, on, on roles in, the, in that environment is because we got uh, quite a few times asked by you listeners uh, to um, do an episode on, on those topics. And second, I think it's, it's quite exciting to discuss uh, this topic uh, with, with colleagues, with peers. And uh, what I realized over, over time that um, I believe I, I was able to factor out some common understanding of the roles um, in, in our discipline. And so it should serve as a guidance to, to newbies, to juniors um, on what kind of role understanding, what kind of software engineering jobs uh, are out there. And um, of course, um, from a background, uh, it's more on a corporate level than, than on a two or three person uh, shop. Um, also, what we do, what how we start off is with the, the roles. We, we focus more on a classical separation of, uh, of the work. Um, we will get to a separation, uh, how it will look like in an HL, in a Scrum way uh, at the end of the episode, or maybe it's already the next episode, depending on the length, uh, how long we, we take for it. <laughs> Yeah. So um, yeah, of course it's it's biased by personal experience, but I I also try to validate it um, and and cross check it with with colleagues and peers, as I said. Yeah, and and I think it's important to mention also that that these are roles. That means it's not necessarily different people. One role can be played by several people, and of course, also one person can play several roles, right? At least for some of the right. combinations. So this is purely about roles um, that you would typically start with with one person, but there is no no problem uh, in in certain environments that you. Uh, associate several roles with one person it, it will be difficult and a challenge for for this person to know when to play which hat but besides that <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. generally no no disallowance or, or um, something that nothing that says that you can't do that right okay so um during this episode there will be a couple of terms that that show up over and over again there are skills experiences competencies do you want to define those or at least give people an, you know, an understanding of what, what the difference between those terms is and why you distinguish them? Yeah, with skill, we mean uh, mainly uh, the soft skills such as communication, creativity, analysis skills, or the ability to abstract, um, ability to, to organize things quickly, or also for the leading positions, like uh, things like uh, assertiveness. Uh, mm -hmm. For um, competencies, this includes things like technologies, um, processes, and methodologies. Um, 
things that you uh, can learn by reading a book and, and gain experience on it. We also have an, an, an feeling on how much experience you should have in a, in a certain technology or how much um, experience you should have on the job in a certain role. But we don't stress that point because that is really something which depends heavily on, on the person that lives uh, um, this role. The third thing that is um, for me quite exciting and maybe maybe the most important thing is the mindset. Like what is your motto, motto or what is your motivation every day? Why, why do you do all that? What, what's the thing that drives you? Yeah, what, what drives you every day? What drives you in every conversation? What drives you um, to, to do this job? What is, what is crucial to this role? And uh, um, so all the skills and competencies do not really matter when the mindset is, is the wrong one for this kind of role. Yeah. Yeah. Where would you put things like the ability to abstract, to cope with complexity, the ability to simplify, to see the essence in something? Is that is that a competency? Is that a skill? Is that almost a soft skill? Where would you put those? Because I find that these are important. Yeah, the ability to abstract, this is definitely a soft skill, I would say. Uh, to cope with complexity is like the, the same thing, but from a different uh, view. Yeah. Um, you deal typically with complexity in, in, in our discipline by abstracting away, uh, by finding models, by, right. yeah, by, by abstraction, uh, you find some, some simplicity and to, to simplify things, to really aim at, um, at pragmatism, I would call this is right. almost yeah. uh, something uh, like a mindset thing, the, the pragmatism I, I have in everything I, I do. Okay. So I guess that's enough for the the you know the the what do you say epilogue no prologue uh, for the for the stuff in the beginning front matter as they call it in book publishing. So let's look at uh, at our at our various roles um, and maybe start off with looking at typical tracks or typical different kinds of software engineering careers. I guess you always start off as a junior developer and then you can you know go in different directions, right? Right. So in, in software engineering, you typically would start really with uh, getting your hands dirty, I, I, I say. Yeah. Um, and that is typically as a, as a junior developer. Develop code program, but also care about all the, the other software engineering uh, topics. Don't, don't dig, dig only in the code. Think also about, about design and and. So when I say developer, it's really not programmer. I, I say it's much more a junior software engineer that that focuses on developing software. Um, and from that on, you, you typically then uh, get into a more senior role. We call it here in this episode, uh, senior developer um, or software architect or tester or team lead or project lead. and um, we we have grouped those uh, more advanced, more senior roles um, behind a junior developer in, in a career because um, that is, of course, some uh, personal opinion. I believe being a project lead, being a, a good architect, being a good tester, you must have developed at one time uh, code on your own. And yeah, I, I this agree. is not to say that an architect later than always should have contact with with the code but i know that it's hard uh, if you are in a large organization to stay in touch with the code i i know that challenge yeah yeah right so so there is no you have nothing to do in software engineering if you didn't ever code i guess that's maybe a little bit provocative but i would say that's yeah that's probably i would say it's the same thing and i know that i'm in conflict with some of the guys out there <laughs> but to truly lead and manage a software project, you you should have had your your you should have gotten your hands dirty once in right. the past. There is also a more um, let's say requirements product business focused track where people start off as a requirements analyst or requirements engineer, right? Right. Um, the and for requirements engineering and product management and and software. Um, there is typically the entry role as a requirements analyst, as a requirements engineer, 
where you would analyze uh, the domain, the requirements, and uh, then continue off as, a, for example, as a product manager. Now, there's also an interesting discussion I, I regularly have and where I have no concerns is whether a product manager should have a software developer background or not. Um, right. If he understands too much of the technology, it's hard for him to play and and play solely the customer voice, mm -hmm. like what a customer likes to do. And typically, the customer doesn't care how it's implemented inside, but much more on the usability on on the features. Right. Um, and so this is this is something that I have no final conclusion on. What but, but we get to that later on. Okay. There are also other roles or, yeah, you know, the guy who writes documentation, a UI designer, or usability person, and also some kind of database admin or app server, ESB admin. Uh, would, you, would you consider those these things just qualifications of a developer or are these separate roles with separate career paths? Mm, I mean, I, I don't see them so closely related to the software development uh, track. Mm -hmm. Like you can be a good administrator without having having written uh, large applications when you're yep. familiar with a scripting language. I guess you, you can already be an excellent administrator. Right. For a UI designer, um, this is also something, should you know the implementation technology, I guess you should know the constraints but um, do you should you have necessarily uh, programmed uh, i don't know i i also there i have no final conclusion right. i think it's i think it's good uh, to have it done once to know the limitations but you can also be uh, a good ui designer i guess mm -hmm. uh, without that knowledge documentation writer of course understanding how a software engineer things um, it helps uh, to write a documentation for those uh, guys for for the products they create yep. to better yep. understand them but i also have very good examples um, for example marcus uh, we know steve rickaby from wiley right. uh, i don't know whether he programmed in the past but he has a very good understanding of what we talk about in our software box yeah actually i i, I well I'm, we might get him on the show at some point but uh, just to, to clarify another thing, I think we distinguish here between a documentation writer who writes like user documentation and, you know, the developer who writes technical documentation about what he just implemented or describing the architecture, I guess. Um, describing architecture, design implementation is somebody everybody should be able to do. So some writing skills are really useful for a software developer, but we see the role of actually writing end user documentation that we see as a separate thing. Yes. Okay. So just though people don't say, you you know, I don't need to be able to write as a software developer. And I guess that's not at all what we want to say. No, this is what we also mean with communication skills. There, there are, of course, the oral communication skills, but the written ones are, I would guess, as important. And yeah. yes, they are also important in HL projects. Yes. How, how to communicate, how to present, how to convince others. I mean... If you're interested in that stuff, go to the Manager Tools podcast, I guess. <laughs> there is a lot of stuff on that. Okay, so let's start off with the junior jun, junior developer. Hey, 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 not able to talk today. What are some of the skills that, that uh, the junior developer has to have basically when, when he comes from university to uh, a software shop? Okay, let me first start off with a with a brief uh, disclaimer and note. This is uh, when we talk about a junior developer. This is really the base level, and all the skills uh, we mention and and uh, the mindset thing is also important for for more senior roles later uh, that we add. So um, it's, we we basically inherit all the 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 skills uh, into the later roles. Right. Um, I would start off with uh, organizing things. As a as a junior developer, you should be able to to organize and structure your daily work, um, to to be able to to structure your design choices, um, to um, basically prepare your work, elaborate on the requirements, uh, understand the requirements, then uh, come up with design solutions, structure rate the design solutions and and find solutions in a in a structured approach so when i say structured i think the the point is that you 
should be able to explain somebody else what your thoughts were and how you came to that solution. So it's not um, about drawing UML diagrams or structured software development or any of that? No, I mean, this this might help to draw a UML diagram and right. to know about UML. Uh, mm -hmm. But in general, uh, use your feet, uh, use your arms, fingers, uh, your voice, <laughs> your writing to yeah. express yourself. Uh, and there we are already with the communication uh, uh, skills. Yeah. Be able to, to express your ideas, to be able to write documentation, um, to write down your design reasoning, and the design decision, um, this is something I, I want to emphasize again, um, that's pretty important then later um, to know why the solution um, now looks like that and, and didn't become another solution. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about the book, The Back of the Napkin? I heard about it, but never never read it. I'm in the process of reading it, and it's about visual communication without, you know, without PowerPoint, just drawing a bunch of pictures, basically. It actually looks like a really interesting way to communicate things, just as a, as a side. We'll probably put it in the show notes, since you talked about communication here. Okay. Um, next one is analyzer skills, like really to be, to be able um, digging deep into the problem. Find abstractions, develop solutions for specific focus given problems. So um, here my expectation is not to be able to um, solve the world problem, but uh, being being given a, a certain task, an area in, a, in, in the architecture, a certain functionality, develop solutions for it. Um, and um, I like then also the, the ratings, uh, like what is the consequence of the solution? What would be the consequence of another solution? What would be the benefit? What is the trade-off that I, that I do here? Um, get yeah. it reviewed by an, by your software architect or a senior developer that is coaching you and, okay. and then start off um, uh, implementing it. So to me, this sounds like uh, you're referring to some of our common background, which is patterns. So uh, would you say that um, being able to, to write things down or communicate things using the pattern form where all those things, you know, benefits, trade-offs, disadvantages, advantages are, are mentioned. Do you think that's a useful thinking and communication template? Marcus, of course, I think that is a perfect yeah, okay. uh, tool. Soft, and <laughs> softball question. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, pattern <laughs> writing, uh, honestly, really helps you to sharpen uh, your analysis and your communication skills. Right. Because uh, with the feedback you get in writer's workshops by, by having your patterns, uh, your, your proto patterns uh, reviewed, by some peers, by experienced guys, by a um, um, plop shepherd, for example, um, yep. you will get valuable feedback, and they will challenge you, and will you will really improve in your writing, but also in your thinking and in your in your ability to abstract and find the the more general um, issues, the more general problem and solution for right. for your concrete solution. Yeah, you also manage creativity as one of the skills. Right. Creativity, this is something that I, I really expect from a junior developer um, that, um, well, be, be just curious, curious, be uh, creative about finding solutions. When you're a while in the job, I feel it's at one point you tend to lose your creativity because you did a solution 10 times and you know it worked <laughs> 10 times that way. You yeah. follow that pattern and you don't challenge it anymore. Yeah. So the juniors often uh, come around and, and try totally different ways. Um, sometimes they succeed, sometimes they fail, but when they succeed, it's, uh, it's really a, a valuable uh, an important contribution to the project. So I mm -hmm. like the so creativity that those uh, juniors have. Think unconventional, right? Out, out, right. out of the outside the box thing, thinking, right. right? Okay, so let's look at some of the competencies. Um, the, I guess the person should be a software engineer uh, by education. I hope. I think uh, this is again uh, some uh, <laughs> a certain mindset of me and 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 some uh, experience. 
Of yeah, course, just be, just I like... be careful because I'm not a software engineer by education, right? Just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of the most uh, uh, valuable and most uh, honored software engineers I, I, I know. <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> no, I, just um, having having a software engineering background on from an education from university from from a computer science studies or from other studies where you uh, learned about software engineering uh, what it means what what testing is what what project management is having heard all the terms once and broadly understanding the field helps uh, helps me a lot hiring hiring you as a junior developer <laughs> right uh, and, and having and, to start off on the green field and just having some programming knowledge is is okay but um, there's then lots of work to be done and things to to experience till till you really grasp the whole field and and the consequences of what you're doing uh, I, I think it's worth restating that you don't say you need an education in computer science right you say software engineering so right. um so you do distinguish between uh, computer science and software engineering right right and in computer science i know computer scientists who had never a lecture in software engineering and right. <laughs> i've also heard that there are some computer science guys who never uh, programmed um yeah. <laughs> so this this is amazingly um it's amazing, but it's possible. Yes. Yeah. Um, then what? What else should should a junior developer uh, know about? This is um, some concrete technology, some concrete programming languages. I don't. I don't say it's. It needs to be one or two or three. It needs to be an interest in programming language, and um, of course, proficient in at least um, one or or two. The ones that uh, you typically have in your project, you you would hire a junior um, more easily and more probably when he has uh, some some language skills uh, already. But that is not a key part. There there are more important things. As I said, this is the mindset. But it yeah. helps. So th there was there was a a, a blicky post by Martin Fowler a while ago where he said that it is more important that the well I'm paraphrasing that the mindset is right. You can teach the guy the language or the technology but you cannot change his mind so just hire for mindset and skills not for specific technologies exactly that's a good way to put it yeah next is uh, testing um here it it really helps again a lot when when the junior knows already uh, about testing <clears throat> knows why he does the unit testing and uh, respects that testing is not something purely tedious, but it uh, it saves him from over hours at the end of the day. Yeah, um, and that that really helps to ensure quality. Uh, and that's just the way we do it today. And um, programming without testing is is I don't know what to say is hacking or yeah, it's 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 just without you know developing code without the safety net. Yeah. And, and and just to be clear again, what you talk about is developer test or unit tests. You don't talk about system test and integ integration testing. That's where you have the separate tester roles, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Next is the domain knowledge. This is also something uh, nice to have, but uh, no yeah. must be. But uh, as soon as you are with a company for a while, um, you're expected to understand the domain in the range where you need to under, understand it. You don't need to have the, the full understanding on the whole uh, medical and um, postal automation or whatever uh, domain, but uh, understand the problems sufficiently, the, the consequences and the constraints to find yeah. uh, good solutions of, to your problems at hand. I guess also that this is somewhat specific to your, let's say, product development background, because if you're hiring a junior for a, let's say, project house, right, then then there, is, there isn't there is usually much specific domain knowledge because you might do a project in this domain today and in another domain tomorrow. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So much for the competencies, I guess. Yeah. Mindset. Mindset, for me, the, the key part, and this is, again, something that 
if that is not available, um, I would have really problems uh, uh, hiring hiring the junior. This is um, for me the first thing is uh, pragmatism. Do the simplest thing mm -hmm. that could possibly work is uh, um, how XP states it. Uh, came yeah. back, and I really love this um, the statement, and it it can help you every day and save your company lots of money uh, when you adhere to it, and that's the reason yeah. why I I like the statement, why I like yeah. pragmatism, because solutions to your what you develop it gets easily so complex, uh, and it's so hard to then reduce this complexity uh, again. And and very often in most cases it's not reduced, which is unfortunate for the project and and costly for the company. So having developers that focus on the on the elementary uh, things is is quite essential. Yep. The second is curiosity. Be curious. Be be eager to learn. To constantly learn new things, new programming languages, new methodologies, new concepts, new technologies. Constantly expand your knowledge because our area is our our discipline is moving so fast. <laughs> yeah, you Hype need to driven. be up to date. Right. Um, okay. So um, I think to to distinguish the 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 software developer or junior developer from some of the more senior roles, I think one way of um, looking at it is that um, the de junior developer typically looks at a or works in a relatively small problem area, something focused, something specific, whereas architects um, are responsible for the bigger picture, right? Is that is that a fair assessment? Right, that is how I would, would put it, yes. Okay, so then uh, let's let's move on, I guess, um, to the senior developer. Um, right. I guess the, the first question is, how do you become one? You start as a junior... And then how do you become senior? Is it purely a question of being in the company for long enough? No, it's not a matter of how long you stayed with the company. Hopefully not. It's about your impact um, in the project, in the, in the solution. It's about your background. It's about your ability to lead. It's about your ability to deal with complexity. And so, the, mm -hmm. so, so this basically skills this is again, again right? with, with the skills. Yes. So, okay. So let's, let's look at the skills of a senior developer. We already mentioned leadership. leadership. This is the first skill. Um, you should be able to, to coach and lead a group of, of other software developers, especially coach juniors on the job. And, um, mm -hmm. so for this, it's, it's a different role that, that you act in. You have suddenly responsibility not only for your own results, but also for the results yeah. and the design the and the, also, mm, the, yeah, the, it's, it's the result of, of a whole group of people, uh, which is very different and will be a change, uh, a, a strong change in your role, in, in your acting and how you how you have to work uh, um, daily, right? And so, but he still works with code, right? He's not he like still works, only the... of course, with code. With code, yes. With code. Okay. Uh, but the second is the ability to abstract, ability to keep keep the overview, the ability to see the bigger picture, mm -hmm. find solutions in larger context, uh, be able to understand the complete solution, the complete workflow, the complete structure. Um, See, yeah, I, I put it the best way. See, see the bigger um, world, the bigger picture yeah, uh, yeah. in in all the problems. Um, have a better understanding, more thorough understanding of the context. Mm -hmm. And and if it's about leading a bunch of other developers, then I guess you become something of a communication hub also. So you you have to uh, communicate between your group of folks and also from your group of folks to 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 higher ups in the the organization, right? Right here, I, I really expect, for example, as a manager, that a senior developer um, can explain things to me in a in a language and using a terminology that where he adapts to what I um, are able to to what I am able to understand uh, with my background. So he who, gets who are oh, you? he has this kind of uh, background, uh, and so I can talk about classes and methods and 
and and unit tests or whatever uh, terminology I yeah. I need to abstract away my nitty gritty details and and tell him uh, the the status project status problem or demand in in a suitable uh, way. And 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 who are you? I mean, who is the senior developer communicating to? Communicating uh, to management, to project lead, um, okay. to the team lead, um, to other folks. Maybe also uh, with a with a customer when the customer right. wants to get a demo and is uh, mm -hmm. uh, gets presented the current status. He might ask some questions, some technical uh, questions on usability or so. Yeah. You should be able to explain the customer um, and give him uh, a good answer. Mm -hmm. Competencies? Mm, competencies and knowledge. Like here, it's really important then to understand um, um, how to do large scale design. So, here, not only design patterns, but also architectural patterns and, and patterns in, in a general uh, sense are important. Yeah. Mm, be so structured that you um, can easily um, guide uh, others in, in finding their solutions and, and coach mm -hmm. them uh, and hint them at the more general uh, aspects of what they currently uh, try to solve. Right. You also brought, uh, yeah, go on. Next is, uh, is process uh, knowledge, know how to optimize your development process. So very often you as a developer get into an organization, into a project and start off developing and using the existing tooling, the existing processes. And here from a senior, I expect that he challenges this tooling constantly and tries to, to find improvements and But this to find the improvements to know how how to optimize uh, his work, uh, it's it's important to understand the processes. To have having seen several kind uh, of implementations of of process implementations, right. um, have have a feeling for it and um, help to improve the processes around him. Mm -hmm. Okay, and of course, as we mentioned before plus all the stuff the junior developer does and knows and has as skills and, and competencies. You don't forget that as you become the more senior person, obviously. Yes. So mindset? Mindset, um, here I, I would put it uh, that way, be a role model for junior developers. <laughs> Somebody where every junior looks up to and says, well, I want to be one day that kind of guy. Right. Um, or girl, sorry. For <laughs> <that>. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, basically, this is for me the typical um, software engineer um, where you say with, without any specializations, the senior developer can also deal with configuration management issues, um, yeah. helps to improve the process, um, keeps the project running. They are the heart of the project and without uh, having a senior or uh, several uh, seniors in, in your project, you typically won't start. Do you have any idea? I mean, we mentioned it before, but do you have any idea how many years roughly a junior has to spend until he becomes a senior or is it absolutely pointless to try to come up with numbers because it's so different for each person? I Well, I have some numbers um, and you might not necessarily uh, agree, your listeners, but I would say three to five years uh, mm -hmm. um, at least. After one year of being a junior, you won't having seen really all the consequences of what you Uh, developed um, mm -hmm. so projects are typically longer and it need it takes more time till you really face the the yeah. consequences of of everything yeah. like of having set up the wrong ind integration strategy <laughs> having chosen the wrong architecture having chosen the wrong technology or just mm, having also enjoying what what you did on a on yeah. a positive side like earning all the all the credits and this takes years i would guess till you have seen two three uh, projects preferably in different technologies um then you have sufficient uh, experience and and can abstract the, away the 
the, the single coincidences and, and right. yeah. see the, yeah. the bigger patterns in in your behavior. Yeah. You mentioned the term pattern again. Hi, hi, hi. Yes. Um, last thing here. Um, if you talk about the uh, guy, you know, coaching and leading a group of uh, juniors, then of course this is not meant to mean that those are his official subordinates. He's not their boss. He has no in German Personalverantwortung, right? Right. So he okay. has no direct reports, um, right. but um, he leads them only functionally. Okay. So just to, to clarify that. Yeah. Okay, so the next uh, step up the ladder, if you wish, um, is uh, the software architect, also called the technical lead. Um, uh, you Calling him technical lead probably has the advantage you don't have to use this term architect, which is somehow has a bad taste in some communities. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the role or the, the name architect is, is quite overloaded and misused yeah. for many often. And so I feel that the term technical lead expresses it more, more cleanly, more without any bias. So what's the, what's the responsibility of that person? How is, that, how, is he, how is his activities, how is his role different from the senior developer we had before? For the, for the software architect, I, I feel that he, um, as, as I mentioned with the, the term technical lead, he leads the project technically. <clears throat> and for, for leading the project, I think it's important um, first that you communicate to all stakeholders mm -hmm. to really ensure the, the, the information flow in your organization. Next, to coach others um, to adhere to best design practices. Next is uh, to ensure the consistency. Mm -hmm. That's um, the big picture thing, the technical, right? Technical uh, consistency, yeah. yeah. In my experience, consistency is best uh, achieved um, by having reviews. And uh, I say reviews and not really designing uh, things by yourself mm -hmm. because in large organizations, you, you won't be able to scale up uh, and solve all the, the design decisions yourself. You, you have to rely on the, on the individual design choices of, of everybody in the organization, of your developers, um, because only then you get the buy-in from them and only right. then you um, manage this huge workload. And your role is then to review the design decisions, ensure that they are consistent overall, so this is your key responsibility. And only fourth, I would say, bring in your own design decisions, yeah. your, your design competence. Um, because as I said, you, you only scale and grow as an organization when you delegate sufficiently to, to the juniors, to the seniors, developers, um, to help them grow. And um, I, I haven't seen any degradation in the quality because at the end, you you have seen all the design decisions before they are implemented typically when you do your job. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you're responsible for the big picture, then in some sense, you're also responsible for implementing the requirements, you know. I think, you know, ha having things like, you know, a, a certain required uh, reliability of, you know, or, or, or availability of the system or or making sure that certain performance numbers are met, or just simply being able to implement the requirements. Is that also your job as an architect? Yes, of course. You There are very often the, the illities, the, the non-functional, um, developmental as well as operational uh, qualities um, are in your responsibility to ensure that they are being uh, taken seriously, that they are followed up on, and then... Um, also um, ensuring at the end of the day that that somebody measures those illities and you can then improve mm -hmm. and i see that with the system architect the technical lead who who really holds those uh, ends together okay let's look at the skills Skills, of course, here we need to be really perfect, uh, I would say, in communication skills because you <laughs> communicate yeah. a lot. Uh, as I mentioned, this is your first priority. Um, be good in, in, in writing um, documentation. Be, be, again, a role model for the organization. 
um, on how to achieve transparency in, in design decisions, for example, um, come up with templates, come up with uh, coding guidelines. Um, here you need, you need really good writing uh, skills and being yeah. able to talk to anybody else in the organization to your head of R&D um, to explain the current status, what is going on, what are the consequences, to discuss the, some visionary things with the product manager. Um, so communication as, as the first skill. So, so in this communication, just to make this clear, is not just technical, it's also being able to talk to customers or product managers. And again, you will probably have to adapt their language. Right. Okay. Next analysis? Is, uh, analysis skills um, to really dig down at a, at a ground. And uh, mm, well, you shouldn't have to dig down always, but when it's necessary and really have the, the gut feeling for when to dig down into a problem and when then to, just to put the finger uh, into the wound and and feel <laughs> what the reaction is. Uh, yeah. But yeah. here have a have a good gut feeling. Uh, rely be able to rely on your gut uh, analysis. Yeah. The, the the next one I think is really interesting. It says networking, and of course it, you don't talk about Ethernet and TCP/IP, right? No, here <laughs> I mean the network a network of knowledgeable professionals inside and outside your uh, company, mm. and uh, I believe. Um, you as an architect can only then grow and advance and keep keep up to date when you keep your network of of peers um, um yeah basically similar to what we did in the past and uh, when we met at the uh, europe lab yep. and discussed patterns um this was uh, for me and i guess also for you an excellent excellent yeah. chance to to meet people with the same mindset and, and yeah. discuss and challenge and exchange your and educate your yourself. Yeah, Go, going to conferences is, is, I think, really essential for people like that. Not, not just, you know, not because it's a bunch of additional weeks of holidays, but it's, as you say, it's really about networking, looking beyond your own local problems and, and understanding how the world moves on, how the community thinks and how, how, how new technologies and, 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 you know, approaches, processes, and things develop. So conferencing or going to conferences is, I think, very useful for that matter. Next is the technical leadership. And this is uh, leading without having disciplinary rights. Which can be tricky, right? <laughs> it's tricky and challenging. You need to convince other, others. And here you again need your network yep. inside the company to achieve what you have typically then no power uh, to really enforce but where you have your network with your social skills uh, established and um, then just get the job done and this is something um, a manager would typically rely on that you have your network that you are able to communicate and exchange the ideas and get convince others by get their buy-in for for solutions win their opinions yeah in some sense, marketing, right? right. Marketing the, your ideas to um, people who should adopt them. And that is more than simple communication. I mean, marketing is, 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 is giving things a spin so people buy into it. You shouldn't lie, but, but just making it very convincing. Yeah. Okay, competencies. For competencies and knowledge, I, I would say you should have been a senior developer for a while sure. before coming, uh, becoming a, an architect. Sometimes I, I personally get applications from, from guys from university um, that after one year of developer being a junior developer, they want to become an architect. And there, it's very often there is not the breadth of... Uh, uh, of technology and ability to abstract. They haven't seen yeah. um, that many projects, that many successes yeah. and failures that, that they can really uh, uh, well lead um, big software projects. Uh, from you ain't seen nothing yet, of... right? I'm sorry? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. I think the clash back in the days or yeah. whatever the band was. <laughs> so... Um, 
as an as an architect you um, should be able to to abstract to um, as as we mentioned already be be really good in, in writing yeah. uh, use pattern writing uh, as a as a training for this yeah by the way another way of 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 of, of sharpening your abstraction skills is uh language design modeling language design coming up with meta models trying to formalize a domain into things helps very much in my experience next thing is something sensitive uh, and and here uh, we talk about technology and uh, mm -hmm. very often well, not very often but from time to time i see architects that are very much in love with a dedicated technology and yeah. try to apply this uh, hammer to every screw, nail, or whatever <laughs> they find in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you should have a good sense about the various relevant technologies and be able to detect the concepts, the, the, the key concepts behind a, a technology um, to really yeah. then uh, make a conscious choice on, on the technology and choose the best suit suited technology not the uh, so, so, so best like technology. So you should be able to look behind the marketing and hype, uh, you know, blah, blah, and, and really see the essence and really see the delta between a new technology and an old technology and see whether it's just the old crap renamed or whether there is something new to it. Yeah. So this, this is, um, I, I would conclude uh, the knowledge and, and uh, competencies with Having mm -hmm. having a broad overview, never lose something out of sight. Keep the big picture. Right. Uh, not be in love with any specific technology. Um, be as broad as possible. I, I. Th this is never a failure. Knowing um, too many technologies and concepts. That's yeah. being an architect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mindset. Mindset. Uh, I, here I would put it that way. Uh, he loves to find simplicity in complexity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so be able to deal with existing complexity, like what, what your predecessor or your previous project just left over. Um, yeah. Be able to deal with that complexity and have an urgent need to structure it. Uh, yeah. you, you love complexity in the sense that you... Uh, have uh, the new exciting uh, project in front of you where you can bring in your knowledge and your talent to simplify and structure uh, things yeah so you don't love technology uh, sorry you don't love complexity in the sense that you're one of those technology sorry you're one of those complexity junkies because you're the only one in the project who understands all this stuff you love it in the sense that you want to get rid of it you see it as a challenge to simplify so it's accessible to others right exactly okay so i guess that concludes the discussion about the architect we have more stuff coming up uh, the technologist the team lead the requirements engineer the product manager but i guess uh, that's that's too much for this episode right so i guess we we cut we make a cut here and continue next time do you want to add any words of wisdom anything that concludes this episode before we shut this down and continue next time yeah i, I think i briefly want to summarize uh, what what uh, the the mindset was so far of a junior developer and okay. a developer and an architect mm -hmm. so first uh, be uh, be curious about concepts about technology about methodology be a pragmatist, be, um, find the simplest solution that could uh, possibly work, be a role model for juniors, try to show and live best practices every day and uh, motivate others to, to follow you. Okay, so then, uh, Michael, thanks for, for bringing all of this to us and thanks listeners for listening. Talk to you next time. Bye. Thanks for listening to Software Engineering Radio. If you want more information about the podcast and all the other episodes, visit our website at se-radio.net. If you want to support us, you can donate to the SE Radio team via the website or you can advertise for SE Radio, for example, by clicking on the Dick Reddit Delicious and Slashdot buttons. 
To contact the team, please send email to team at sceradio.net or if it's specific to an episode, please use the comments facility on the website so other people can read and react to your comments. This episode of Software Engineering Radio as well as all other episodes are licensed under a Creative Commons license. Please see the website for details. Thanks to Charlie Crow and the Podsafe Music Network for the music used in this show. The song is called Vegas Hard Rock Shuffle. <laughs>